Greetings. I'm sorry I couldn't make it in person to the chapter workshop, but I wanted to send you a, a video tutorial about how um, we at the National Office go about doing our newsletter and how you might get some ideas to do your email communication with your chapter participants and members uh, a little more effectively. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here and we're just going to kind of go through some of the things that we do on a monthly basis for our newsletter. Um, most important piece to your email is your subject line. Uh, ideally, it's short and to the point. Um, you, I would refrain from any explanation points or things that are a little alarmist. Um, you also have the opportunity to put preview text, which um, you can put um, additional text that will be the first thing they see after the subject line. So for us, we just put something that, that describes the newsletter for that month, and then just the standard Fulbright alumni newsletter. Um, for those of you who are not using MailChimp, a lot of these um, uh, parts are still applicable. Um, it just, uh, this is how MailChimp look, looks, but every email that you send has a subject and a preview text. So that'll be how it is. So um, when you're designing your email, um, a very important piece is hierarchy. So not everything in the email is as important as other things. And knowing what to put first, second, third is very important. So when you're emailing your members, you want them to know that this is the most important thing that I want you to know about. And if you don't scroll past the first part, you're, you know, this is, this is it. So for, for our cases, this is just an example from a, uh, an email, an email newsletter that went out before the conference. Um, for our most part, obviously the ambassador coming to the conference was the most important. So we put it first and the header has a link in it and as, as well as the image itself. Um, you don't wanna have too much text in your emails. Um, it's ideal that when they click on the link, they'll go out to a blog post or um, something that has more details about that thing. You don't want to put all the information straight into the email. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one of the main reasons is that um, email services like Google or um, Yahoo will cut off your email if it's too long as far as length. So you want to keep it as short as possible. Um, so leave all the long text for your website or to link out to. And if they're really interested, they'll click on it and find out more. Um, and this, for our newsletter, we try and keep our width a certain, you know, try and keep it, I think, less than 700 pixels in width. Uh, you don't want it to be too, too large. Um, also, ideally, when you're testing out your email, you want to make sure you preview it in, um, in as, a, as a mobile device, because a lot of people check their phones. So uh, MailChimp has a really cool um, feature where you can do preview mode um, and that will basically let you look at it in a certain way so in a, a you know a mobile device or a desktop um, there is also an, an inbox feature where you could test out different inboxes um, on a desktop or a mobile device so let's just say I you know I do this and I want to do um, what it might look like on a mobile Android. And it'll do its, its thinking, basically sending a test email out um, to see how, how it'll look. You can also just do this manually. You can just send a test email to yourself and just check on your phone. Um, this just saves a little bit of time because you don't have to go through the whole process of sending the test, opening it, and... Um, Anyway, and you can also do multiple clients. So if you want to see what it looks like in Chrome or um, Outlook or something like that. Anyway, so, so this thing is still loading, but uh, oh, there it is. So that's kind of how it would look in uh, Android Gmail. It's a little small. I've tested it out on my phone and it looked a little better than this, but again, um, just keep in mind that people read on their phones, so. Um, another thing is uh, you should have sections to your email if you have multiple pieces. So uh, we have like a job board, opportunities, 
And these should be you know, a larger text, like a header one or two um, style, or you can just change the font size. Um, another thing is if you have two, two different uh, column, like a two column thing, so that's it's not making your email so long, you can have it in two different columns or you can create a table. Um, anyway, and then the store and accomplishments. Um, so we just try and keep everything as, you know, the hierarchy of what is important um, as top of mind. Um, I mean, there's a lot to an email, but uh, big things for not getting into spam is that you don't want to have like a lot of explanation points, uh, exclamation points, not a lot of uh, click here. So the words click here, a lot of uh, email providers will flag that as spam. So you wanna say like follow this link or just have a button and just link it um, without saying click on this link. Um, so we have like read more or we have here the, four, the 45th annual conference linked or just the title of it linked. You don't need to tell people to click like it's implied. So, um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, when, uh, so again, you're gonna, you know, make links, images, uh, upload them. Now, a lot of you might be like, well, I wanna send an attachment and some of these email providers, they don't let you like attach an email to a mass email. So the best way to do that is to really upload the PDF or whatever it is to your website and just link it to your, um, to your information. Um, yeah, so my next section will be about the website. So the next part is um, about your website. Um, a lot of shepherds are doing their website in different ways. A lot of use WordPress, um, but I wanted to just talk about a simple way just to use your website in conjunction with your emails. Um, again, I'm gonna share my screen here. So for example, um, like when I was saying that we have our campaign here, our email, and when we link out, we're gonna link out to a blog post. So the best way to do that is just to create a blog post. Um, and so whenever they wanna read more, they can just link out to that. Um, the same is true with um, your media. So if you have um, you know, media pieces like uh, PDFs or, sorry, um, if you have PDFs or images or something like that, that you want to attach to the email, all you would do is you would upload it into, um, into WordPress and then link out to it. So like if we search here uh, in your report, so let's say I was, I have an annual report email. So um, what I would do is I would go out, get, Go to, go to media, upload my PDF. And then once I have it uploaded, I would um, click edit, like you'll see here. AR2021. I just know, I just happen to know there's a PDF that's on the server that's in the website. So you'd get this URL here. So if you clicked on it, you copy that URL. And if, even if you paste it anywhere, um, you will notice that it comes up with the PDF. So it's the same for an email that you just would link any document that you wanted to be attached just as a link. And you would just use that, copy that link just like you would. Um, so I wanted to be brief and I know everyone's situation is different when it comes to communication. Um, but anyway, we're always here to help at the national office. And um, if you have questions, um, Christine can take them down and I can answer them individually if you'd like via email. I hope you have a great day and a great rest of your workshop. Thanks.